Hi, I'm B from Nectar Mechanics. On today's video, we're going to be making a junkyard diorama out of actual trash. So, if you're familiar with my channel already, then statistically, you've probably already seen my Cybertron diorama. If that's the case, then you already know that the original 80s movie is the thing that got me into Transformers and is the thing that I have the most nostalgia. Now, I've made it a little hobby of mine to try and collect as many of the original film's iconic characters from it, you know, Hot Rod, Ultra Magnus, Galvatron, that sort of thing. And I like to keep them all together on their own section on the shelf, but then I realized it looks bland. It's just a giant white square. So why not? I make it a fancy diorama, just like I did for my Cybertronian ones. So I decided to choose Junkion of all things, because one, it's one of the best scenes, Retgar, and two, it also has the most characters in it at one time. They're all there at some point. So to start things off, I'm going to actually measure it properly this time, uh, because last time I just assumed, based on past measurements, and was slightly too big, which was kind of frustrating. Now something you may also notice is that I've taken out the divider on my shelves, so that way this is double the size. This is going to be the biggest diorama I've ever made, and I'm so excited. And also terrified. Now that I've got my basic rough measurements done, and I've done a couple of test fits, I know that this basic shape is going to fit. And I've also decided to take out the two side walls, because, again, learning from the Siege diorama, it worked for that one, but I want more brightness to come through, and because the shelf is white, leaving the walls off will make it look brighter. What I want is it to look accurate to the source material, while also being a fun and enjoyable build. So to do a compromise, I thought, okay, let's give it that trash look by doing lots of little layers, lots of little tiny pieces, each with their unique cut shape. Some of them more like C's, some of them more like L's or squares, various different shapes, Tetris style all layered on top of each other. Now for this, I'm just using cereal box cardboard. I mean, junkyard out of trash, it's gotta be recycled, right? So cardboard seemed like the best idea. Then I'm also just using hot glue because that works nicely with cardboard. It's easy. Now there's really not much to say about most of this build because it was basically 20 hours or so of just cutting and gluing tiny little bits over and over and over and over and over again. That's that's basically all there was to it. Except for when we get to the mountain parts. Now if you look at the source material, you can see that in the background they have all these various sort of mounds of various rubbish and trash that's collected over time, looking very spiky as it gets towards the top. And I really wanted to try and emulate that because that looks very cool and when I want to do my photography later on, it's going to help get the silhouettes and everything correct. So to get the vague shapes right, what I did is I took strips of cardboard, thin strips, and I would sort of bow and bend them into the vague shapes, hot gluing them in place and sort of wrapping them over till I created a vague lump shape that I liked. And then like the rest of the build, I would cover it in the little layers of cardboard to get it looking more detailed and accurate like the rest of the build. Now for the little spikes, I used cut up matchsticks because I could have done them with cardboard, but because they're so thin and small, they'd probably bend and have a crease line in it. And I wanted to be safe rather than sorry. Now, after I've done a lot of this cardboard and layers and stuff, I'm just really starting to like the look of it. It's got that very nice textured look I like, but we can take this a step further. If we're doing a junkie on out of trash, why not I use some of my actual trash? Because I buy all these craft tools or whatever, I always have plastic packaging or random twisty ties or dried up super glue cans I don't need. I even have a full-fledged broken glue gun that I've just held onto just in case. So finally, being a hoarder is a good thing. There's a term that originated, I believe, in the 70s when they first started working on the Star Wars films called Greedling. And Greedling is basically adding detail for the sake of detail. Lots of little tiny pieces on an otherwise flat surface. So even though this shape is just a square, pretty much, yeah? Because it's got so many little layers, so many different things of different textures, like a spring, like matchsticks, like plastic bubbles or whatever, cardboard. Because it's so much of it, it looks more detailed and thus more visually appealing. So like I said before, wasn't really an awful lot of skill on this build, which is actually why I think it's a great beginner's project to do something like this, because all I had to do is take little squares of cardboard, cut them up into various shapes, little random things that I didn't need anymore, hot glue it all in place, and just 
have a go. It really didn't take that much brain power. It just took a lot of hours because it was hundreds of little tiny pieces all on top of each other. So after about a week of cutting, gluing, doing all of that, I got it to a stage where I was pretty happy with the results. I didn't look perfect, but I think it looked really quite close and I was happy to move on to painting. Now, because I have used these plastic parts or whatever and all these super glue things, I need to make sure that I use primer. So I just used Warhammer primer. That way the paint will actually stick to it instead of just immediately sliding off because I'm using acrylic paints and they don't bond as nicely to pure plastic. Once I'd let the primer dry outside in a ventilated area, I got to start doing the painting. And the painting is actually the whole reason I wanted to do this particular project because again, you look at the movie, they've hand painted those backgrounds because it's all 2D hand-drawn animation. Those backdrops are hand painted and it looks amazing. And I really wanted to try and emulate that with my diorama. I wanted to get those sort of cool textures and stuff just from the paint. Now I thought, this would be easy because it's the painting part, right? I just slap some color on and it's done. No, turns out the Chunkyeon color not only differs from each scene, sometimes being more orange or more pink, but it's really tricky to get that color to look right. When I did my orange, it was way too orange. When I did my pink, it was literally just pink. So it was a, lots of custom blends of just random grime and stuff trying to get all of these textures and layers all looking right. This wasn't a terrible thing though. Having layers that I didn't like as much or were the wrong color would actually be useful later on because what I could do is layer colors that were correct and instead of leaving it as a flat, boring color, I could use a wet dishcloth because it's, you know, acrylic paints and rub some bits of it off, revealing some of the previous layers, giving it lots and lots of texture. And after I did countless washes, dry brushing, various other sorts, it started to look closer. The real point where it started to look like how it should is when I dry brushed it with a very light pink. Because the movie has at least a slight pink tinge, even when it's orange, that's when it really started to all come together and look like a proper finished diorama. I opted to do the background more orange than the foreground, making it more pink and purpley. So that way, when I photograph it or just see it on the diorama, there's an obvious distinction rather than it all being one color. I use metallics and coppery paint to give it that sort of metallic sheen so that when it catches the light, it properly glinted. So after a ton of time giving all of these washes, all of these dry brushing, all of these layers, I think it's time that we get to see some of the cool photographs that I was able to get. Let's have a look. Now that, that is cool. That is, that is, the best part is that because it's a bigger diorama, I was able to get so much more shots, so many different angles than I was able to on the Siege one. And because I didn't put the side walls on, I was able to get the camera on those different angles as well. There was no cardboard blocking the way or anything. Is there anything I would have done differently? Probably not actually, because since I wasn't so, like desperate to get it as close as I physically could to the accurate source material or whatever. It was a fun build, yeah? I think this is the most fun I've had this entire YouTube channel, right? Every build I've done, Minecraft chest, Siege diorama, Iron Man helmets, all of that, 
they've all had some little bit of stress or, you know, like with the original diorama, I was not happy with the paint job. It looked nice in photos, but in person, nah. This, however, it just seemed to work. I can't even explain it. It just was an enjoyable experience. I'm really happy with how this has turned out and it's made my display like easily 10 times better. So I hope this shows to you that if you've got plenty of time on your hands and a decent quantity of cardboard, you can make something pretty cool. Hope you enjoyed this video. No, it took a bit longer to get out than I would have liked, but hey, what happens happens. I'm gonna be trying to do some more Transformers Tuesday videos as well. I know some of you were enjoying that and I've gotten plenty of the new legacy figures to check out. So if you like this video, please go check out some of the other ones. I've got a backlog all the way back to February now, jeez. And yeah, make sure to like, share, do that sort of thing. You know, we're on 40 something subs. Let's see if we can get to 100 by the end of the year. So keep safe and dare to be stupid. Catch you next time.